So, uh, AF Fafa Fui, where's the, um, where's those tapes of what the other stations are doing to mutilate my show? It's like, you're getting worked up. Just say it was on fire. I'm out of my mind. Now, this has to do with what we uh, heard uh, the other day about what station? The station? San Diego. What, San Diego. It, what, what You got those tapes? Right up there. Where? where? Oh, okay. That's what I needed. Now, remember, they're sort of like all bunched together. They're not there. Yeah, I know. See, I'm getting to the bottom of this today, but you got to understand something about radio program directors. And maybe I'm too tired to get into this right now, but... <laughs> you sound like you're struggling. Yeah, okay. You know what? I'll do this in a few minutes. Okay, let me take a few phone calls. I can get you excited about it. I got, cause I, I got some stuff. Yeah, right yeah. Well, all right. Well, you want to get me excited about it? Yeah, we found out... We talked the other day about how uh, a program director in San Diego was editing out our bumpers because he didn't like the sound of the ones that we had. Maybe I better explain it. I think that was pretty good. Mm, people don't understand bumper. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's just that they don't know what you're talking about. See, when, when, in my mind, this show should sound a certain way. That's my decision. You've thought about everything on the show. Yeah. Believe it or not, I have. <laughs> and the, uh, you know, I know sometimes you're listening to it and you go, gee, I wonder if Howard realizes Did we're doing it. think about that? Yeah, but I, I, <laughs> there are even things that sound like mistakes that we intentionally do. I mean, th there are things that I want. I want the show to sound a certain way. It doesn't always sound the right way. I don't say we've ever gotten it 100% right, but... <laughs> Who would know what that yeah, was? Yeah, right. In my mind, I know what it is. I just, you know, I control what goes on. That's the advantage of having your own show. And and for years, I had to do this show, even before I met Robin, where I would have to sometimes make compromises because I was working for some jerk, and I just got into the station. And sometimes the jerk would, you know, the program director, I call them jerks, because they, I've never met one yet that had a brain in his head. But the jerk would sit there and tell you, gee, don't take too many female phone callers. It makes you sound wimpy. So you'd say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, like how could I control that? And why would I control that? I mean, who even thinks that? Guys love to hear men and women talking, and women love to hear men and women talking. Well, who thinks that way? I mean, it's maybe the dopiest comment I had ever heard. You know, and then there were people who made me want to play eight songs an hour, six songs an hour, two songs an hour, whatever it was. There's dopey theories about radio. So now that the show has been successful for 10, 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is that we've been successful at doing this, <laughs> I now, 15, I'm now at the unique position that I can tell you honestly that we don't get much interference from program directors. Much? We don't get any. Well, at least here in New York. Uh -huh. well, what, what happens is we send the show out over a satellite and we syndicate. And these Vipers, these program directors, like all of the program directors I've met before, are all the same. It, it disturbs them. Let me tell you what goes on psychologically, because it's funny. The president of this company said the same thing to me. He said, he didn't know I had mentioned this on the air, but it, it's an obvious fact, because he knows he's he dealt with a lot of program directors. It's four hours a day that they don't have to be involved with, and yet it drives them crazy because morning drive, Morning drive time is the most important part of the day, and they can't believe they're not a part of it somehow. So they take the most inappropriate element of the show. Or the innocuous. The innocuous element of the show, and they change it. They change it because they got to change something. They have no more clue to any of this than anybody else. They decided that my announcer, the guy who says, we're back with... We set up. We're back with the Howard Stern. <laughs> That's Scott, the engineer. That's why you're not invited to the boat ride, Goofy. Oh, he's upset about not being on the boat ride? Yeah. Yesterday I had to go in and give Scott a pep talk and tell him how he's as important to the show as anybody. Yeah, I wondered what you were going to do. I know you left the office armed with uh, information and yeah. you're going to go talk to Scott. I went and talked to Scott. Got him all pumped up. He was feeling real good. And then he realized no one had invited him to the boat party last <laughs> night. It ruined yeah, it. right. You know what I noticed during that conversation? Terrible. What? You give me that pep talk every once in a while, and I'm stupid enough to believe it. And I was right. watching you give it to him, and I'm right. going, does he mean this? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He goes, you're, uh, Scott, you're as important as anyone else on this show, and, you know, we need you, and, and you're a very important element. What you do is as important as any joke. I said, listen, I said, if I write, if I, if I got something going on, if, you know, if me, Fred, and Jackie go in a room, and we think up something funny to do, or I go, uh, all of a sudden I'm on a roll, and I need something quick, if it ain't in there, I ain't so funny. So you're just as important to this bit as anybody else. Okay, pal? 
And he was like, you're right. Uh, see, well, he was, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's nice to be recognized. You know, I tried to recognize him, try to pump him up, tell him yeah. how important his work is. That's why you see he's like a man on fire today. Oh, he was very delightful yeah. this morning. Yeah, he's feeling good. Good morning, Miss Quivers. Have a moment here. And a flick of the nicotine. Well, as Jackie says, you know, everyone could use a compliment once in a while. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's free. Does Jackie want the pep talk? You know, it really is nice when you do that, boss. How did I possibly enter into this? <laughs> I'm even wearing a new T-shirt. I'm feeling very a positive. new look. Right, I helped you out yesterday. I gave you a little pep talk, right? You're the man. All right, okay, so there we go. We had a little conversation about the show. Mm -hmm. I'm a brand new me. <laughs> I never realized how it loved me so much. <laughs> I'm important. I am important, too. <laughs> Not just Robin, Jackie, and Fred. I'm like, just as important as everyone else in the bit. Howard told me I'm as important as Fred, Jackie, and Robin. <laughs> and somehow I believed it. <laughs> I'm not just another cog in the wheel. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, maybe a cog, but I'm an important one. No, I'm a clog in the wheel. <laughs> no, let me, let me just say that John is a big dick. Why? Because he is. I mean, you know, I asked him how the boat party was, and he said, how come you didn't go? I said, I didn't even know about it until Monday. Yeah. And, th and then obviously he comes in and has to say it. Oh, something. so you were invited? No, no, I didn't know. No, I didn't. I heard so, about so it. So Stutter and John, an intern, was invited, and you weren't. Of course. Oh. <laughs> Actually, John I wasn't gets upset paid. though. I, who said I was upset? Uh, I heard you were bummed. John, John is unbelievable. You I wouldn't think. have gone anyway, right? I might have. I, I might have gone. gone. They had a DJ on the boat, you know. Did they really? Yeah. yeah. He, he, he's lying. Why is he lying? He was like. Oh, you know how it is around here. I never get invited. You know how it is. That's exactly what you're saying. So, Scott, why no, are you saying? I purposely do that to him because he knows that's what I'm going to say. He expects that. You aren't legitimately... I'm a, not a, upset a little, about it. A little, a little myth that they didn't ask you. No, no, Oh, he's such a liar. He's lying. <laughs> Yeah, they had some DJ on the boat, and it wasn't Scott. Yeah, right. How get a load of this. Like they hired someone. Yeah. Oh, How I heard him when I called and told him to go to the studio. I heard him complaining to his intern. They didn't tell me until Monday. I even heard you doing that, and, I, and, 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 and you didn't even realize that I was. He was upset. He doesn't like to admit it. Okay. Upset it. Uh, yeah, admit it. Okay, I'll admit it. Right. I mean, hey, I'm not gonna get out of here unless hey, I Doctor Locks. Hey, hey Doctor right? Locks and Bagels. What's what's uh? <laughs> this is the guy from the OJ trial. He spells a lot. Uh, what 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 do, you, what do you think of Scott? E S Yes. Yes. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, anyway. All right, Scott, thank you. Well, wait a second. I think the point was, after you gave him this pep talk, why isn't your board working this morning? Yeah, I know. I can't get the deep voice thing going. It was working. I just checked it this morning. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, oh, he just threw it off. I didn't take him up. I, 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 I swear I didn't touch anything. All right, thank you. All right, very good. Let me just add 718 bag 5040. Uh, all right, okay, okay, goodbye. I've been forgetting my plug. That's right. For everything but boat rides. Yeah, all right, get out. All right, so anyway, the last pep talk I gave him. <laughs> all smiley. Oh, I wish I had gone to see it. It seemed like it was going to be a serious talk, so I stayed out. Yeah, it was pretty serious, actually. <laughs> Did you tape it? No. For once, I didn't. It was so serious, I almost forgot to smoke. <laughs> no, he didn't. He had a cigarette going all the time. <laughs> he had to smoke yeah. for that. Anyway, so these program directors, you learn when you get into radio that there is a guy, they have to appoint the program director. Why do they appoint a guy a program director? Because they got to have somebody who sits there and keeps the record library. And they become to think that they are know something about radio. And you begin to learn that they know nothing. They're good at the records. They know how to pick the records or something. I don't know what they do. But when it comes to this show, this show is unique. So the pro there's a couple of the program directors who we send this show to, like San Diego and, uh, oh, I don't know. Miami. Miami. San Jose. San Jose. San Jose. I heard something about Albany. Well, that was not all. That's a different that issue. A different San Jose. Issue. And, and we, we say to these program directors, you are now buying the Howard Stern show. Leave it, pl play it, and then go worry about the rest of your station. So a couple of the program directors, when the deep voice guy comes on and he goes, We're back with the Howard Stern Show. All right? Whenever, whenever we play that, they have decided that his voice doesn't fit the rest of the station. Can you imagine? As if any of this show fits the rest of the station. Most of the stations we're on play music all day. There is nothing about this show. This is a talk show. That's a music station. Nothing about this show fits the rest of the station. If I worked for these guys directly and I was a beginner, they would have me playing 97 records an hour. They would have me doing, you know, they would have talking me... Talking for two minutes. Right. Talking into the commercials, only talking out of the commercials. Right. They would have a list of they rules. Theories. On right. Everything. And meanwhile, it, none of it means anything. So 
So imagine that every time we come back, instead of hearing the deep voice guy who says a couple of funny things, we write stuff for him, you know, I would still show your back. Instead of hearing that guy, you hear this. This is what they're playing in San right. Diego. And they're writing their own jokes and they have their own Yes, hands. yes. And now back to the land of Stern. All right, that's one of them. And first of all, that guy's voice, I don't know. That's that guy's awful. He, he sounds like he's in the middle of gay sex. Maybe that's the program director. And now back to the Howard Stern Show, the land of Stern. Wait, well, why does that fit their format? Why is that better? Yeah, and, and quite frankly, maybe it is better, but I don't care. Don't touch my show. Leave it be. Let us worry about it. And, and, and back to the Howard Stern Show is not as good as now back to the land of Stern. Yeah. Yeah, and what is the land of Stern? I didn't write that. I don't want to be introduced that way. I didn't. I mean, it's like on Letterman. If the affiliates cut out uh, Bill Wendell, whatever he says, and put in their own thing, they did, it's just not done. It's moronic. And not only that, they cut. Out, then they play their own music. We play music underneath that, so they end up cutting out whatever I do. Mm -hmm. They're chopping out elements of the show. And while to a program director who's a nitwit doesn't understand what I'm doing. Do you understand? Well, like I said, those are natural transitions for us to make. Too. Yeah. Sometimes we wind up talking about the music. We wind yeah. up talking over the music. It makes no sense. Whatever. So you're cutting out parts of us anyway right. when you do that. So when we're talking about music, which is part of your station, you're screwing. It just why are they so stupid? Why are these morons touching the show? And we have a contract, no less, that states if you edit the show, you're off the network. You, you, you're in default. Maybe they want that. But, well, if you want that, then that's one thing. I can't imagine you want that when you're finally getting some ratings. It's a subconscious thing. Yeah. Well, maybe the program directors want it. Yeah. Because they can't stand it or something. I don't know. Why, I would be thrilled if I was a program director and I had a hit morning show. Yeah, I'd worry about the rest of the station. And well, just well, that's the problem. Take care of themselves. The rest of the station isn't performing that well, so then they get all well, nervous. They look bad. The work is cut out for you. Yeah. Now, I didn't ask for that. It's a very nice thought. I didn't ask for that. I don't know why that has to be on instead of our guy. that I love that one that's my favorite I, I knew that would hit you where yeah. you live yeah the dumbing down of uh, who, you're part of all that oh yeah <laughs> who asked for that but th those guys told me they weren't writing jokes oh I see they're right they're not writing jokes. <laughs> yeah I don't know what they're I guess that's cool what they're writing and I guess I don't know what I'm doing I'm the guy getting the ratings and put my ass on the line but I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to bumpers don't you understand this is a these program directors want to somehow say I am in control or I can do what he does. He's not such a... Yeah, guy. yeah. And God knows what this announcer sounds like. Hey, Dr. Uh, Lex Luthor, how does this guy sound to you? G-A-Y. G-A-Y. Oh, gay. Oh, gay. Okay. Right. That's the doctor from the OJ trial. He spells everything. I'm down. Relax and close your eyes as 91X takes you deeper and deeper into life. There's, there's a really good one coming up, the John Hausman one. Mm. Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Who, who asked for this? I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to be introduced that way. Part of me. How annoying is that? Now we go back to where we earned it the old-fashioned way. We sterned it. They're not writing jokes. Who asked them for this? Oh, man. Why don't you just rape me? Come on, wasn't that program director come down here and just rape me? My pants are down around my ankles. 
I, it, there's no end to the idiocy of this industry. There's just no end to it. And it, and like general managers will pay a, you know a small fortune to get their stations going to make sure they have a hit morning show. They'll advertise. They'll do all kinds of things. They'll put all kinds of money behind it, and then they'll let some kid come in who's the program director of the month and start tinkering. and start tinkering with it. I thought I had escaped all of this. And they lie to you. Are you guys? What are you guys saying? Oh, we're not. We're not doing anything. We're not doing any jokes. We stand it. Bunch of goofy kids. We're going back to Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Who? Who asked for this? We're going back to Howard Stern. It, it, as far as some people in San Diego go, I might be sitting in. Why do I have to explain myself? It, it's just wrong, okay? I don't like it. It irks me. Only morning show that matters. I didn't ask them to do this. And why wouldn't they consult me before they did this? See, one of the things I said to them... No one likes to consult me because, I, you know, I, I tell them, jerk off, leave it alone. Well, then you're giving an, you're, they're giving you an opportunity to say no. Right. But I was talking to the program director in San Diego, and I said, you know, one of the problems is if you guys are doing these jokey things... People get the impression that we wrote them, yes. and they're not funny. Yeah, and what did he say? He said, well, I don't think they're that bad. Oh, he, does. he doesn't he think doesn't they're that bad. Think. He's a moron. He hasn't accomplished what I've accomplished yet. He's the program director. He thinks he's, my, he's in charge of me. I love how these guys, they get to a market, and they think they know yeah. what, what all the people want. Diegoans want. Yeah, and, but, and, and look at what he knows. He knows <laughs> that they want this goof over the other goof. Right. But the listeners don't know that you're not involved in writing these lame Of course things. not. They don't have any idea. And this guy thinks they're wonderful. I don't think they're that bad. Who asked him to think? When he was thinking, he didn't have a morning show. And now back to the land of Stern. The Elastica. The Beastie Boys. The Cranberries. What's this? Oh, I see. This is showing us that this is the announcer for the rest of their day. Oh, maybe that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. The whole show doesn't fit in with the rest of your day. Use your brains. A nitwit. Your favorite albums and your favorite artists on your favorite. You know, every one of these guys that I've worked with, these program directors, and this is their big job. Hey, I'm in San Diego now. They all end up in small markets. It's a no-win situation. We worked with the top guys at NBC. I don't. Even, I think they, one of the guys I think is is on uh, welfare now. Oh. All right. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not making a joke. Radio station 91X. Going, going back to Howard Stern on the only morning show that matters. Oh. No. Well, at least you didn't write a lot of jokes out. Yeah, it's the same thing over and over again. <laughs> back to Howard. Who, who asked him to mispronounce my name and go Howard Stern? I don't want people saying Howard Stern. I don't want to be introduced as Howard Stern. That's not how I say my name. I don't want. I don't want. A, I don't want my name pronounced that way when I'm introduced. Who asked him? Who? Who is this kid? Who is this friggin' idiot? I couldn't even imagine that you might have thought out how yeah. you want to be announced. No. It's a whole positioning thing. No. The kind of uh, attitude you want right. from the announcer. He doesn't think that that ever happened. Or how I want to interact with it. it. has nothing to do with him. This show has nothing to do with the guy in San Diego. If he dropped dead tomorrow, this show wouldn't change. This show should drop in on a station like an alien rocket ship and remain untouched. Oh, my God, they're such nitwits. And the general managers are nitwits. And the people who own the stations are nitwits because they allow this to go on. They should, be, they should take the guy and throw him out a window. Say, who told you to do this? So, evidently, this is going on at three or four of our stations, and it's going to be changed. I mean, this is an outrage. So, has this stopped over at this station yeah, why am already? I, yeah. Well, I know it stopped in um, San, San Jose. Jose. San Jose? Yeah. Because San Jose is an infinity station, but we got Ron Nenny, the genius over there, the renegade, who's going to te teach everyone how to do radio. We're going back to Howard Stern. We're going back to Howard Stern. X-E-T-R-F-M, Baja California, Mexico.
Mm. What is this? I don't know what that is. What is that? I think that guy just put that on a tape to show you that, you know, our station, the transmitter's in Mexico. Yeah. So I guess they have to do the legal IDs and stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please. Who are we kidding with that? FM Baja California, México. XETRAFM Baja California, México. Mm. All right. Too far. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we, uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Are we going to get the ones from the other stations? Yeah, we're working on it. This was sent in by a listener, by the way. Oh, so we didn't get it from... No. No. The stations don't want to send me this stuff. In fact, uh, what we're going to do later in the program, I am going to ask, I am going to assign a person in each city that we're on to monitor my show and inform me. I'm going to give them official status on their show. Mm. They will become, we have to name them something. Informants of some kind. Give them a secret service name. The Stern Patrol. The Stern Patrol. One of, our, one of our San Diego listeners just called and they said during the breaks, not only are they doing weather, traffic, and news, yeah. which you hate, but they're also doing ski reports and surf reports. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You'll get no ratings. Zero ratings. And I don't care anymore. Those are the elements they also add because they're going to help us with the ratings. Yeah. That's the, that's the program director helping us to be local. Well, we so don't need to be local, nitwit. Well, somebody told me, one of the listeners wrote me a letter also saying that up in Albany, the guy that's on the air does, like, shtick, you know, when, you, you know, when you're off. Yeah, that, that's the other problem we have in Albany. We have another person on the show we don't know about? When we go to commercial, he does shtick, reads his mail. I mean, it's frightening. They don't understand. Get back, get back to the show. Get back to the show. Get back to the show. And I sit there and I go through this with them. And I got this frigging Andy Bloom. If, if, if anyone is listening to Andy Bloom, if he is consulting you on us, please do not listen to him. He knows zero. He knows less than zero. I thought that was Andy's, part of Andy's job. Not my job. I, he started to form a consultancy. Andy decided he knows how to market us. Uh -huh. Andy's playing news. He's playing oh, key reports. Oh, that's Andy's Yeah, that's Andy, oh, yeah. Andy's idea to replace these. Uh, he used to replace these bumpers. I don't know what he does. But I am telling you, there is one person on this planet who knows how to market this show. That's me. You know what I want to do, uh, Fa Fa Fui? Uh, you call my agent and let's arrange for a video conference. It's called a video conference. I can do it right from my house. I have video conferencing. I want them all to get video conferencing. And we will have a meeting. It will happen twice a year where I will teach program direct how to leave the show alone. It could all be done if they just left it all alone. I want to have a meeting. Having conventions. Yeah, I want to have a meeting with all my program directors. All right? I will take care I of I want to have a meeting. and They can ask me questions, and I'll ask them questions about their station. i got to do this. This brings up one interesting question. Yeah. You're going to have meetings once a year. Right. You're going off the air in November. Yeah. What are you meeting about? Well, we've still got three months. <laughs> and in the next three months, I want the show run perfectly, okay? <laughs> I want that done. I want it done quickly. And that's it. I don't need Andy Bloom telling them what to do. I'll do it. I'll teach them how to do nothing. I'm good at that. Fred, you're going to be my example of how to do nothing and succeed. There you go. All right? You've, d you've spent your career doing nothing. Oh, I patterned myself after Jackie, so. Right. There you go. See, I'm an example of doing nothing and not succeeding. No, no. You do something. Jackie does something. Fred does nothing. <laughs> I just get nervous now when you talk to Fred. Yeah, I can't even laugh at that. Walk out. <laughs> Now, listen, That's he's got to okay. do his own thing. He's got to be a dick sometimes. Maybe he'll <laughs> be with me. <laughs> Since we're off in November, as Robin points out, have two meetings next week. <laughs> That'll take care of my twice meeting a year. <laughs> then we will fulfill our quota. I want a video conference. Set it up any way you can. As long as I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> All right? I will take care of that no, right away. Them, there's got to be video conferencing centers in their now, area. Who should be at the video conference? The general manager and the program director? Yeah. yeah, the general manager, the program director, and the owner, if they want. And I think the promotions director should be there. Right, well. them too. All right. All of them. All of you. 
Because evidently, no one knows how to do this right. You don't want the salespeople there? No. They can sales talk to the owners. No. Okay. That's a whole other meeting. Yeah. I ought to ask, ask Dr. Lakshamanga, <laughs> what the hell all of these people who carry our show are on? Dr. Lakshamanga? G. Yes. yes. N. G. E. Ganja. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I have to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Hey, Howard, I'm, tr I'm trying real hard not to make you crazy, but yeah. I can't resist good radio. Yeah. You want to hear uh, a tape of the our Albany uh, disc jockey responding to what you just said? Oh. This is oh. funny. He did this on the air. Yeah, great. Like, this is on the air. Like seven minutes ago. Hello? Yeah, hello. Hi. Hi I'm, I'm going so nuts from this. Yeah, this, this is why, you know, people want to win. They, let me hear it. Well, honey, what, can, let me just preface this real quick and say I was telling Gary uh, when I was on hold. It, the guy, I've never heard him read the mail on the air. I don't know. Uh, Gary said it was during Best Of or something. And you know what I just found out? He's been real good about this. The guy that was on before him about uh, three or four months ago that ran the show before him was awful. Yeah. Right, apparently he, he, would the literally, guy, he would do a whole show during your show. Apparently the guy before him got fired, which I didn't know about. Well, it's he's really absurd. Just, just play the show. You're not supposed to talk. Why would they even have an so, opportunity to so now he's to all talk. upset. He's like defending his honor or something. Oh, we're in a war and I don't know it. <laughs> With ourselves, these are the people who are working for us. In Albany, friendly in, fire. You know, I don't know. You know, I got to tell you something. Uh, the Rush Limbo show is syndicated. Okay, you don't hear someone come on in the middle of the show and start to do routines. Not even weather or anything. You're right. No, they play the show for Christ's sake. Well, all I'll say is they've had three guys since you've been in Albany. They've had well, the first one because this is why Albany is going to always be a, a, a tertiary situation. It's, it's, it's going to be a they can't rise above being in Albany. Let me, just let me hear it, will you? Okay. And tell me if it's too loud. Can't be loud enough. Good morning. 6.39 is the time. My name is Jim Stark. And, gee, I guess I'm going to do some shtick now. Is that too loud? Oh, it's perfect. Okay. That's the guy on Prodigy. Like yeah, to let everybody know that uh, you guys probably already know this since you're the listeners and you hear me every morning. Um, I'm not doing this stuff. I don't come on here and I don't do shtick. I don't read mail. He's doing it now. I don't do bits. I come on here if I have to give you guys whatever information I have to give you. Oh, right boy, I got a shock jock. Back to the show. And uh, if you guys could do me a favor oh. and maybe defend my honor here, oh. uh, call 1 800 Oh, fire him. Wait, wait. He really loses it in a minute here. He's so he, oh. he gets so confused he can't remember your phone. Fire family. him. And just let them know that, you know, this stuff isn't going on in Albany. We, we do what we're supposed it's to do. It's going on right we now. To get in and, out of the com in and out of the commercial breaks and get right back to the show, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So 1-800-65-STERN is the number to call, or you can fax them at 212 uh, Is everybody uh, stable in this country? Never mind. It doesn't matter. I'll give you the fax number later. Oh, great. Great, great read. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> he was so upset. Yeah, he's so upset. Just don't be upset. If you want to be upset, be upset off the air. Defend Just do my honor. You know, I love this. You know, I knew. I I, I said to myself, why is everybody's me now? Now they're going to come on the air with whatever they're feeling. They're going to emote on the air. <laughs> this guy's really, really confrontational, by the way. When yeah, I know. Off the air. Yeah, he's on Prodigy all the time. He's on. Yeah, yeah, he's on Prodigy, telling everybody how big and green my teeth are. Yeah, I know. We already know that, Karen. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'll tell him. But he was an eyewitness. Oh, my God. And, you know, the program directors in these markets don't get it. The reason that so many people can't do what I do for a living is because they're bores. Making me nuts. I'm going nuts with all the commentary during my show. Everyone's in on the act. It'd be such a simple thing. You just turn it, up, it, turn it off. That's the problem. You get done. That's the problem. It's too simple. It's easy. Everyone wants involvement with me. Run the frigging show. Run the show. Get Jim on the he's, phone. He's, he's already yelling at everyone in the office. Good. So we're going to well, put him through. Get him, get him on. Let him yell at me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I, I hope Howard. he takes the same attitude with you that he takes this with us. It's a mutiny. It's a mutiny. Don't talk. Play the commercials. Get back to the show. Well, if you need somebody to monitor... I want him, everyone to know it. that uh, I don't do these things. and I, No one cares. I'm going to do some stick now. It, nobody cares, Jim. Nobody cares. 
Well, this gentleman is applying to be a monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, you are, you are, listen. And I listen you... to the show, for, I work all night, and then I come home, and I tape the whole show when I'm sleeping, and then when I get up, I, I just happen to be up this morning to hear this. All right, now, as a monitor, I'm going to have to swear you in, we're going to have a ceremony, you're, you're our first third. monitor. Oh, okay. Deputy. What's your name? Alan. Alan. Let me tell you what's going to have to be, though. You're going to have to tape the show every morning. I do, I already do. I've been doing it for two years. All right. Oh, here, let's get, I'll put you on with uh, Jim. Hold on. All right. Jim, we're yeah. on the air, Jim. You're on with Howard. You're on the air. How you doing? Jim. Yeah. I just heard your rap. Yeah. Don't do it. Uh, okay. Why are you let doing me, let it? Let me ask you a question, Why Howard? are you talking during my show? Howard, can I ask you a question? What am I doing now, shtick? Let me ask you a question. I can't. Howard. You should have just gone to commercial. Do you, do, you have a, do you have a boss? Do, do I have, have a, a boss? boss? No, not really. Do you, well, okay, so you're like the only person on the planet who doesn't, okay? Okay. I have a boss, and he tells me that when a sponsor pays... For a traffic report, I have to do it. No, 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 Jim, you missed, you missed the, the point. Only time you I missed, the you see, this yeah, is why you're belligerent. Your boss didn't tell you to come on and start defending yourself. No, yeah. he didn't. He didn't tell you to do shtick. Just I sit don't and do, do it. Shtick, I didn't talk about traffic reports. I'll take that up with your boss. I never ever Howard. come on. And you just did it. it. I just heard it. That was the first time. I just got trashed for something I didn't do. Like, I didn't say you. Reading the mail. I didn't even talk about you. No, Gary did. No. You're not listening. Was it was that other guy? In the Albany station, Jim, I know you're egocentric. You gotta understand something. What they're doing is taking bits of my show and playing them during the breaks. That's a separate issue. That's oh, oh that's Gary a separate issue. Said. That's a separate issue? No, that's the issue Gary was referring to, not you, believe it or not. Okay, wait a minute. I've got the show right here on tape. I'll rewind it and run it back. Good, go you. ahead. Just accused us of doing shtick between commercials and reading mail. It is shtick. Oh, boy. It's shtick. I don't care if you're playing you know, a tape or you're reading mail or you're doing anything. Just don't talk during it. <laughs> I know it's... I Listen, you can go do that anywhere else. If you want to start I, your own morning show, Howard, go do it. Howard, start taking calls from Albany and ask people how many times in the morning I even open my mouth. One he doesn't. He's telling the truth, twice. Howard. He's I know. Right. I'm not complaining. Jim, listen carefully. All I know is you're doing shtick now. <sighs> I can't, I can't defend you there, Jim. It's something I didn't do. You just did it, Jim, on the you air. You just did it on the air. I defended myself against something I but didn't it's do. Not, Jim, right Jim, I did that. Jim, it's not your show to defend it yourself. You want to no, defend no, yourself? Wait till I'm he's not done. Defending this. Oh, my God. How did this get all of a sudden turned into I want to do a show? Jim, you listen to me. Jim, listen to me. Jim, show. listen to me. You're making it worse than it is. Yeah, uh, your job is to read the weather or whatever. If you have to do that, you know, I know Howard doesn't want that done. But if you have to do that, do that. If I don't you, even do that anymore. But even the time he, you hear me do a weather forecast. But I can't understand how you would, after listening to him for ten minutes, talk about he, how he doesn't want you talking on the air, then go on and make right. a personal comment like that. Yeah, I mean, I, said, I did a whole rap, please don't talk on the air. And then you go on the air and you talk on the air. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's dumber than Gary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, He's got you there. And by the oh, way, Jim, get to know this guy. He's your monitor. Something. Jim, when you're talking about somebody. You're not talking about just some guy in Albany. I actually have to sit here and listen to it. Yeah, so. So no, call us yeah. on the phone. Why did you, you have to, to get on the air and do it? Call me up on the phone and talk to me about it. Yeah, well, it does. It, 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 if I call you on the phone, it doesn't really matter. Now it does it because you're gonna. You got a whole room full of people that scream and yell at me. No, no one's yelling at you. Wait, 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 wait. That's not going to defend Jim, your point of view. Jim, you're not listening. Hold on a second. You went on the air during my show, and I wouldn't even mind if you would call me and we put you on the air here so the whole country could hear it. Don't go on the air during my show and start soapboxing. I did. Oh, right, you well, did, can, can Jim. I, can you I did. Two seconds without an interruption to explain why I said what I said. I understand. You explained it perfectly. You feel that you were um, personally, um, personally attacked. attacked. You had to come on the air and defend yourself, which you did. And just, be, but just because it. you were right, I'm saying you. I'm saying you got to sit there like a robot. And pl I'm not saying it's a glamorous job. I know it's not a glamorous job. I never thought it was. Right. I mean, you have no point of view. You you don't exist. You don't exist. As far as the listeners are concerned, you don't exist. You're right. You're absolutely when right. When you insert yourself into the show, you exist. Yeah, but when, yeah, but when you jump in like that, suddenly we you have show. certain problems going on in Albany where they're playing bits during the show. They're pl like, for example, I'll give you an example. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. Well, I don't. Let him give. Yeah, we don't. All right. What what is going on is while you're not talking per se. Let's say at the beginning of the show, I play Dr. Lakshmanga uh, uh, reading, spelling his, spelling name, his name for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. During the during the um, during the commercial break, sometimes they'll play Dr. Lakshmanga spelling, oh. you know, spelling well, his name. No, that, that's not exactly what happened. Okay, the, well, not exactly. The, 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 exact, the, you tell him exactly. The what exact happened. example, if you must know, Jim, 
is we had Fred the Elephant Boy giving his speech introducing Howard in Cleveland. Right. It's and then it ended up airing it at... Jim, shut up! It ended up airing at about 10 o'clock in the morning later on as, right. you know, just for filler. After right. Howard's show? No, 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 no. Well, well, first of all, when was Howard ever off at 10 o'clock in the morning? No, it wasn't right. after Howard's show. They start playing it, in the, and then we say to him, but don't do that. An intro. I know. Then we said, why are you using that as an intro? I give you intros. The rules are you're not supposed to take any elements of the show and cut them up. Is that copyright violation? And, and as soon as you brought it to my attention, I got rid of it. Right. So the point is, while Jim might not be guilty of talking during the show, as we say, even though he just did it. Yeah. He oh, was I'm innocent sorry. I'm not until allowed to defend myself. After no, 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 you're, you're not. You're to defend yourself. On. You're not allowed to defend yourself. No, Jim, you want to defend yourself? Show. Go buy your own radio okay. station. Whether it's 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 this show or any other show, I certainly wouldn't take being accused of something. I Jim, do we accused anyone. you of playing bits during the show while you weren't speaking that and you were playing them. That is not happened this morning. That is not. Oh, gee, we weren't so literal. We said you were talking as opposed to, and plus we're talking about a lot of the markets. We have problems. Your problem is a unique problem. You figured out a whole new thing, Jim. You're an innovator. <laughs> you figured out. You have a new way of irritating. You have a new way of irritating me. Excuse me, I apologize. Okay, I how's that? Already have enough ways to, be to irritate you, Howard. Yeah, there's no end to irritating me. <laughs> don't experiment. Don't play sound effects. Don't play bits. Don't do anything. And when you get upset, don't go on the air. Yeah, yeah and even if you get upset, even if even if 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 the if the Japanese are attacking and bombing Pearl Harbor, don't get on the air with it. I, I'll give I'll do it. Again. Let me do it. And if you have something to say that you think I've wronged you, call me and tell me. All right. Jim, those two people that ran the show before you were so bad, and you, you're so good, but, I mean, this morning you really blew it. Well, I'm sorry, but when I feel like I was attacked, I don't care if God uh, he comes doesn't down listen. The mountain, he doesn't I'm listen. He doesn't listen. He would do it again. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't get it. Yeah, it sounds like he would do it again, Robin. Oh, he definitely would. Yeah. So Jim, would you do it again? Jim, Robin. if you feel anything, pick up the phone and call Gary. He'll talk you down. And he'll put, uh, if you had called Howard, he would have put you on the air to let you defend yourself. Of course. Jim. Jim. Well, if you feel anything, you know if you feel anything, you don't have to get on the air and do the following. It was like you went over his head. I did stick. Yeah, I guess I'm doing stick. All the time you took with that, it could have been into the commercial already. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. you know what? All the time that we're wasting on this, we could have been doing a show. No, that's oh, not your decision. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He called me one time. Yeah. He was mad we weren't getting to commercials on time, and he was angry that you were wasting time talking to an intern because you were goofing on Ganji. Right. Yeah. He, oh, Gary, you're blowing that. No, no, you oh, did say so, that. Yeah, goes, I don't want Howard. Comment, right? Howard's so, wasting you know time what? talking to an intern. Tell him to get to his damn commercial. Oh, Jim, oh, way to go. Oh. That's exactly what you, you know said. You know what? He's going to start taping every single thing that happens around here. I swear to God. What's that? It's just ridiculous. Did you say that didn't happen? That's not the way it went down. What, 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 what went down? Okay, first of all, you got obviously you can tell I'm a hothead. Yeah. And in the yeah. middle of the conversation, I said something about, I don't even remember the exact comment, but that was not what the what the conversation was about. But that's what Gary wants to make it about. That's exactly what it was about. You, that what? makes his position hey, Jim, a let me lot ask, better. Jim, let me ask you a question. Why did you call me that morning? Because we weren't getting to commercial because I got time. a phone call getting screamed at because I didn't legal for two hours. And somebody else thinks that's freaking important. So you told me when to how to run commercials and when to run them. That's what you told me. No. That's and then not, you mentioned that's that Howard Wade... That's, that's, exactly that's not what, what happened. Me. You know damn well I called and said... It, would it be possible? Oh, you're such a liar. You're the oh, biggest okay. liar. I'm a liar. I'm it's a liar. You know what it sounds like to me, Howard? Did you, it did you to me like you should be talking to this guy's boss because he's, he no, doesn't no, have no, to. No, listen to me. Listen to me. You know what? You're absolutely hey, Jim, right. Jim, did this you is just not worth it at 6.59 in the morning. Did you curse out my intern two days ago? Yeah, you know what? I did. I didn't curse out your intern. Why? I said the F word in the middle of a sentence. I never directed well, that it at be anyone. Cursing, then. <laughs> why did you curse? He called Gorilla because he was mad. I talk when I'm not on the air. No, but I mean, why did you curse him out? I didn't curse him out. I never said you effing this or you effing that. But you swear to people you don't even know you called her on the phone and cursed at them? He oh, said, you okay. better get Gary to the effing phone now. So, okay, he didn't he didn't curse at Steve. All right, and what happened? What was so important? Let's see, what was that What was that one about, Jim? I can't remember. No, no, you, that was, that was the, we already talked, that was the one you explained to me the other day. Oh, right, that was where I said I, I heard there's some weirdness going on in all right, right, right. Get right. Gary to the effing phone now. No, that's, I work no, effing no, hard. That's, wrong. No. that's not what I said. I said, what the F did I do this time? Oh, boy. That's not the way I heard it. That's what I said. All right, look. Well, why Here's are you uh, cursing at our unpaid well, interest? And why am I talking to you so often? You know, I don't even know who runs the show in Phoenix. All right, listen. Here's my point. Well, Here's my don't point. worry about it. You won't run. know who runs it here after this morning. <laughs> <laughs> are we losing you? <laughs> I'll you're leaving you us, Jim? I'd love to get paid to listen to Howard for five hours. You want to run the show? I'd love to. Jim, if you're leaving, can we just have some advance notice? We can get this guy hooked I, up? I, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll train him for you, Howard. Thank you, Jim. No, that's okay. No, we'll no, let him know. I'll train him. He'd be better off on his own. Jim, listen to me. You're a bright guy. I've talked to you before. Listen to me. 
Listen to me. I'm listening. All right. Calm down. Cool off. You hear what I, I said? I am. Uh, you know what? I no, you're not cool. Not, you're not cool and you're not thinking straight. Listen to me. I am relatively calm. I'm just, I'm upset at the fact yeah. Okay, all right. Let's clear the air. reading mail and... Oh, okay. So you didn't read the mail. We understand. Boy, that's a real awful accusation, too. Yeah, you know, that's... You don't know why you're so upset. upset. Right, you know, you know how rabid your fans are, Howard. <laughs> you know how rabid they are. You Jim, listen and are. don't talk. I'm one of them. Jim, listen and don't talk for a second. If you're a fan, you're going to listen because you're used to listening. Good advice. You know, somebody should take it. <laughs> Listen and don't talk. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're a fan of the show, my advice to you is to listen and don't talk. Meaning, listen and don't talk during the running of the show. You're a very important part of the show. You're as important as Scott the Engineer or Fred or Jack. Oh. I'm not going for that speech. If when you start talking during the show, I can I lose ratings. Not. So what I want you to do is listen with your ears and not talk with your mouth. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And, and just for the record, morning, Jim Howard. has never read the mail on the air. That, that, but not that I've ever heard. All right. But but I could start if you'd and like. And get to know this guy. He is your monitor. And he will monitor the show and make sure everything is going smoothly. Oh, believe me, I've got plenty of monitors. I'm sure he hates me now, but I swear he he, he is the best of, of of the people that have done it. All right. And by the way, let me sw as long as Jim is on the phone, let him hear you be sworn in. All right. I'm sorry, your name again? Alan? Alan. All right, Alan. You are the first person to be sworn in. You are my Albany representative. You will tape the show every day. Raise your right hand, please. It's up. I am a member. I am a member. Of the Stern Gestapo. Of the Stern Gestapo. I swear. I swear. To listen and tape the Howard Stern Show daily. To listen and tape the Howard Stern Show daily. I will make note of anything that sounds foreign to the truly original, magnificent elements of the best radio show in the history of the universe and report to my master, Howard Stern. I will make note of... Uh, anything. Anything. Uh, 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 can I improvise? I will have... I will have... Weekends off. A weekends off. Only to return to my duties on Monday Only fresh. Only to return to my duties on Monday. Thank you. You're now sworn in, Alan. Thank you. I, 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 Alan, I, will, I can't I, wait to meet you at an event. Uh, uh, you won't. <laughs> you won't. No, Alan, you have to remain anonymous. Oh, I absolutely will. Or else I'm, you, I'm you could 40, be corrupted. I'm 40 miles from Albany No, anyway. I didn't mean that as like an... I, I really would like to meet this. Guy. No, 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 because like the I'll FBI, you you'll never know when they're around. These guys all work undercover. he will use the wire clippers from Cleveland. And Gary, computer. I want... How many cities are we on in? I think 20. All right. I need 20 badges made. Okay. I'm being serious now. Really? Alan, will be mailed, Alan will be mailed a badge because that's the only way he can be identified. I don't even want you to know Alan's last name, Gary. Okay. You'll have his phone number and he can be contacted. Because I'm setting up a whole organization. A whole secret organization. And because even if the list is found, no one will know Alan's last name. <laughs> Would this be Stern's list? Stern. Me Stern's Media Marshals. The Stern Rangers. Your Deputy Allen. <laughs> oh, boy. The CIA holes. <laughs> you are going to get a badge in the mail. Now, don't show it. Don't go flashing it. And don't right. flash it around. Unless you're in a bar and you have to get laid. Right. Can I show my... No, I'm married. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, whatever. As you know, I don't get laid. I'm married. Oh, yeah. Can, I, sh can I show my badge to my wife? Yes. Okay. You know what? You want to know something? In all seriousness, I wouldn't even show my badge to the to the wife. She shouldn't even know you're a monitor. Yeah. She really? should think that... Did you ever see the movie True Lies? Uh, yes. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was a secret agent? Yes. And his wife didn't know? And she didn't know. In a way, I would prefer... I wish my wife looked know. like Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. I'm J. Edgar Dopey, and you are uh, my uh, marshal. Your deputy dog. Your deputy <laughs> dog. All righty. All right, we're going to give him numbers 1 through 20, so you are Agent 001. Wow. All right. Ooh. That means you won the first. Howard, let me just say that, in all honesty, yes, I'm almost 30 years old. This is the greatest honor I've ever received in my Thank life. Thank you. And believe me, it's not a, it's not a shallow responsibility. It's you have not. To, I you take have it to... very seriously. I've been taping your show since I, I found out that you went on the air about a week after you went on the air in Albany. I didn't know you'd been on. I want 20 badges. Uh, one should say uh, Agent 001 through 20. You understand? Gotcha. And it'll say, um, it'll say uh, either Stern Rangers, I haven't decided yet. I like CIA holes. Yeah. CIA holes? But your name definitely should be on it. I know. Uh, uh, hmm. Howard Stern's CIA holes. Or Howard Stern's Media Marshals. It is a Marshals badge. Uh, CIA holes is better. <laughs> it's more us. Uh, Robin? Um, so, yeah, CIA holes is good. <laughs> <laughs> yes? 
I don't know if we want. You know, listen. I, I have nothing personally against Jim, so I don't want to get Jim upset. I don't either. He, I'm sure he hates me now. But there's a guy on that th that says at the end of the show, Jim sometimes talk about you. Now, that I, mean, I, I don't know. He's full, full. I'm you not know. even in the room at the end of the show. Well, let's find out. Hold on, Jim. <laughs> Come on. Come Hello. On. Yeah. Sir. Howard. Yes. He totally goofs on you. Jim goofs on you. Are so you bad. out of your friggin' mind? What does he say? The guy is full of it. Howard, now, now let me let me talk to my CIA hey, hole. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Howard. I can. Well, I got to well, right tell now. you the truth, Howard. The second this, the second you say we'll see you tomorrow, I turn my radio off. Oh, I see. I can handle the whole thing right now. I Howard, can, the guy. I can, you can guy to the opinion of someone you trust. Howard, Jim, let the guy talk. Let's see what he has to say. You, you know, let me talk, Jim. You're out of your oh, Howard. I work on Wall Street and I work for at Saratoga, up in upstate. All right. The guy gets on, and he, he he thinks he's an intellectual, and he goofs on you. He tries to come with all these innuendos, all these double entendres. Give me an example like, of what you know, he's doing. You're talking about Ken. I'm talking about you. Yeah, are you sure? Head. Never mind. I don't even talk on oh, this you show. You are such a hothead. No, wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen. Have you heard him do this, like, in the last few months since Ken Allen's been gone? Yes. Huh? Yes. I'm, every time yes. I'm up there. I'm up there on Thursdays and Fridays. When Howard's on first run, when it's not best of, the guy goofs. He you're out of your, up, you're, are you talking about during the show or after the show? During the show, he comes on. Like, what does he say? Hold it, hold it. Everybody every calm time, down. Every well, it's not true, Howard. I thought he, 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 no, hold it a second. Let's calm down. Let's get to the truth. Show a tape. Bring a tape. Yeah, it's not true. You know what? Do I don't you have a tape. I don't, I don't tape the Jim, do you I ever... Jim, how do you sign off every day? I don't. I'm not he in the room doesn't. He's, got, he, he's telling the truth. He, he, I've never heard him come on after your... Maybe it's, I'm not in the room. It's not about at show. Hold it, show. guys. Guys, this is getting out of hand. I'm going to I'm gonna ask my media marshal, my CIA hole, to quiet down now. Not say a word. Howard, listen. Jim, I'm going to ask you to be quiet for a second. Okay. All right. Okay, now, you're happened. saying that at the end of the show, Jim somehow inserts himself into the program? No, it's not necessarily during the end of the show. Basically, what happens is... If he comes on during like if he comes on during a bump or something like that, what he'll do is if he, not necessarily doing like a traffic report or something, but he'll come on and he'll he'll basically basically make a comment. You know what? And he was we were talking. Gary was saying before how Jim had called up and he had said something like, "Well, Howard's talking to the freaking intern, whatever." Da 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 da. What he'll do is he doesn't get he doesn't seem to understand that when you're talking to the interns, when you're having the conversations about the personal interludes, about everything that goes on, that's entertainment. People laugh. People dig it. Right. Everybody hangs out. So what out. did I say? You had you said something like, you said something about two weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, you said something about Howard's, no one is interested in Howard, not no one's interested, but something like Howard's talking about his private life. You're a liar. I'm not a liar, dude. You you're a liar. You said it. Bro, you're, you're a liar. Oh. You got a tape of it? Howard? Yeah. I can't, I can't, I don't tape it, bro. I, I listen to the show. I said, I, I said, uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen. Uh, uh, some, some, something about that? Could listen, you make no, it up what, a little what, faster what, what, so what, you don't what, what, stutter you next time? All right, listen, listen. Since you don't have a tape of it, I am going to, I am not even going to entertain this. This is a new day. This is a new day. New Howard, Howard, I have sworn got, in. You've got your CIA hole right, right. there telling you. I got my CIA hole who's telling me he hasn't heard it. By, by the way, CIA hole? Yes. Please tape even five to ten minutes after the show. Okay. Well, I will. I, I, All you'll yeah, I usually do, but I do our music. And I'm not saying. Howard. I'm not saying, sir. I am not saying that you didn't hear it. I'm not telling Jim that he said it. I'm starting from days one, yeah. zero. See the problem. All I'm saying is, listen. The problem with Jim is that Jim does not understand what entertainment is. He does not know your show. Right. That's the problem. So okay. He's doing. He's trying, and it's not even so much. You know what? Did, did you're trying to make your show. You really are. Show. You're getting on here just so you can get on the air, man. You're no, making dude, this up like all the other well, cards who make things up just no, to get on the air. you don't understand what the show is about. I understand the show much better you than you not. ever would. You have would. no idea what the show okay. is about. Howard, you Howard, do? there have been times in the Let past. these guys have it out, please. You're unbelievably retarded. I'm unbelievably retarded. You are unbelievably retarded. You, you have no idea what get the show is. You don't know what so you could run around and tell your friends you were on the radio this morning. All you try to do That's is come on to Howard and try to make his show your show. I don't even talk during the breaks, man. You do all the time. Every You're out of your mind. You know how many times I opened a mic yesterday? Once. Why would you even do it once? Because I had a sponsored traffic report and I had a billboard to read. <laughs> if you got a billboard to read, deal with that with your with your freaking station manager. Deal with that with the program director. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Now you're now you're off base. Oh, no, that's it. Jim's job is no. Hold it a second. You Jim's, have you have an idiot in. who doesn't you've know anything, anything about Ken Howard with innuendo with all these little all what? these little remarks that you don't think anybody. What can little remarks? Do. What little remarks? You want to hear my remarks? Traffic was brought to you by Cole Muffler for quality, service, and value. Cole Muffler. Oh, then you get a plug-in, you moron. <laughs> 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 How much oh you get paid for that? Cole 
All right, guys, look, this is absurd. We're, we're in a new day. Get Everyone has had their say. Pull and get the moron fired. He's no, an idiot. I'm not going to have yes, him fired. Please, please. No, no listen, fired. remember Ken Allen, how bad he was? Please Don't get, get Jim me fired. fired. Yeah, but, bro, hey, Jim... Jim, what about JC? Remember her? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Listen, listen, you, listen to you see, you see, there yeah, you go. All right. All right, listen to me, guys. Guys, I had to bleep you. I think you meant to say shtick, Howard. Right. That's what I meant. I meant shtick. Listen, there is a board operator from another market who says uh, this is boring people, and he has to get to his break. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that. Now listen to me. No, that was me on the other line. Listen, we let's all calm down. Traffic report has to be read. There's no and and when uh, commercial endorsements are uh, what keep the show going. Do you understand? He just got a national plug for his. his yeah, that's okay. That's all right. Let's everybody no, calm down. No, Which no, now no. in Albany we have all uh, the record is set straight. This Howard, is day one. Know. Day one. We have now our CIA hole who is going to uh, CIA hole Allen. Who works anonymously. No one in Albany is going to know who he is. He's going to walk amongst you. He'll have his badge, but that'll be that. No one will know who Alan is. Even I don't know exactly who Alan is. While I have his phone number, I don't even know who well, he is. You don't have it yet. You are the don't Adrian up, messenger. Right. <laughs> and Alan will be the monitor, and we will find out what's going on. But, Howard, this is, a, this is a great time to tell the rest of the country that this is an example that they should follow. Right. And well, of course. Oh, of but, course. But you have to tell them because they don't know that. I know. And we need other CIA holes. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm in New Jersey two days a week, but well, you have that. That's well, we'll probably need a full-time CIA hole in Jersey K -Rock. operating out of there. K -Rock. K -Rock here. And we don't even need that here. We run the show out yeah, of here. He's the K-Rock. Duh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, duh there, pal. Alan, you're getting a little full of yourself now yeah, that you've got a badge. Up. You're the CIA hole. All of a sudden, you're Mr. Big. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it went to my head. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Jim. Yeah. Thank you. CIA Hall Allen, thank you. CIA Hall Allen has to hold on because I do have to get his number. I will. And um, it's all straightened out now, hey, is it not? Howard? Yes. Can I say something to Jim? Yes. Jim? Is it Jim there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Jim, you're nothing. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're right. Well, you're right. absolutely correct. I've been trying to tell everybody around me that for the last 24 years. Jim, we all got it. To Howard then. What? Why do you try to come on the Howard show then? Uh, all right, all right, Jim. It's enough. You know what? It's enough. Honestly, Jim. You know what? You must be somebody who has something against me, and I dare right. you to show your face around here. And I will show my face. You <laughs> if you've got such a problem with me, bring it over here. Because you have no talent. <laughs> I know that. You what do you no think talent. I have this you job have for? A voice. It's not even like you have no, a Why do you have to insult Jim? Because Jim is a... Howard, you know what? Oh, come on, come Howard, on. Howard, right. Howard, you know what? what? Howard, it's I'm cool. saying the right. things... You know what? This is the deal. This is my this is my goal here because you know what? You have the skill that you say the things everyone in the country wants to say and they can't. Yes. I'm saying something right now that you can't because he's got no talent. He's nothing, and you can't say anything. No, no, no. And I have already. No, 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 no. You don't, don't have to belittle right. the guy. That's the guy is doing a more. job. The guy is doing a job. It's important to me that he do it right. We're working it out. Everyone is called up. If the air is clear now. The air is clear. You think so? Yes, I, I, really I, do. I would. I would love. I would love for you to bring whatever personal problem you have with me to me, baby. I'm coming down there right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> get the camera up and all of it. You know what? Get 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 um John, get Melendez to come up to Albany. All right, I'm gonna be, be up there. I'm gonna be up there on thir next Thursday again. Right. And I'm gonna talk. To, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the station. I'm gonna talk to John, and we're gonna go face to face, mano a mano, mother. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I Listen, let's this. everyone calm down. All right, okay. You realize how happy you're making me, right? I, I, you know, I, I think you're getting. I think you're getting. I think. I think you're starting to sweat. I think you're getting all sorts of excited from an idiot like yourself. Yeah, I'm such an idiot. Yeah, I'm you such are. An idiot. I'm such an idiot that I can Look, point there out. There are 150,000 people at any given moment that are listening to this show in this market on this radio station There's right now. Three they all know you're full of crap. Your idiocy. Okay, you're the only idiot who has this opinion. Does it tell you something that you're the only one with this opinion? Hey, Jim, let me tell you something right now. I'm making a call to everybody who's listening to Howard right now Come on. in Albany and yes. saying this. If you listen to Jim in the morning and you hear him, 
You call up the show, or you even don't like the way he sounds right now, people. Call up right now. And Get me fired! I'll do it well, on the other hand, if Get you do like fired. how he sounds... And yeah, if you do like how he sounds, you, you can get up at 4 in the Jim. morning. All right, all right, look, Jim, look. You screwed up once this morning, but you usually do a good job. No, you're, I don't. I'm Jim, your ego is so remember? huge. Jim, your ego is so huge that you had to butt into the show, even after you were told explicitly not to. You were told not to. He got on the air, and he right. right. is so all right. huge. All right, all right. My ego is so huge that I don't It's been straightened out. Jim now understands. He apologized. It's over with. It's over with. Now we have You're a CIA right, hole. You know what, Howard? Yes. I'm really sorry to do this, but I gotta go. All right. Okay, Very good, Jim. Gonna, Maybe I'm it's best. Really oh wait, wait, I have, wait, a, wait. I, I have, I have a resign. I have a phone call to make to my boss. Jim, really? Goodbye, guys. Are you going to resign? Yeah, I'm going on the mountain. Jim, you're resigning? Jim, you know, okay. Wait, can I get his boss on the other line? Jim, if you, hey Jim. Quarter after seven. Hey Jim, Jim. Hello. What? If you're going to resign, are you resigning? I'm, yeah, Jim, would you... You're resign, kidding. Please? No, that's, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. I am out. Why would you react to this guy? Why would you give up your job to react to this guy? Because yeah, Howard Schmuck. It doesn't matter. I can make more flipping burgers. Oh, really? We, 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 well, if you're going to resign, can you do it on the air? <laughs> I mean, can you get... resign right now. This is ridiculous. Get the PD on the air. This is absolutely ridiculous. So yeah. why are you getting upset? I, it's between... It is between you and I. We have it all worked out. And you can call the PD, and I'll do it for you on the air if you want. Really? Yeah. yeah. Call, do it right now, Jim. Really? I've really had it. Why? Because Jim, of this guy? Hey, Jim. What's the problem? What is your problem? This is a bad week. Wait, to be Howard, Howard, Howard. I've had Howard. it. It's a bad week. Howard. This guy wins, okay? Why would you let him win? You win. Why would you let him win? Because he's a loser, Howard. You're right. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Have a little charity. Have some charity. For God's sakes, you're being absurd. The guy's so upset he wants to leave his job. That's not right. Okay, you know what, Jim? I'm done, kid. Hey, Jim, you know what? <laughs> I got compassion. You know what I'll do? If you shut up for the rest of the Howard Stern show, <laughs> and you don't say a word every time he comes on except what you absolutely have to do for uh -huh. your job, uh -huh. then you know what? We'll like you, but don't screw you know it. Because we don't want to hear like you. I want we you want to come up here, and I want you to bite my ass. I'm going to bite you so hard. I don't want you to bite you so hard you'll please, mother. You know what? Listen to me. Maybe you're not paying attention here, but I don't really care what you think. You don't care? You don't care? You you're an care. idiot. You're a fool. You're, you're a is. joke you're and a moron. You don't care. Your problem is you care. Because Howard doesn't give a crap what anyone says about him because he knows he's got the truth. You're such an egomaniac, idiot. idiot. Uh, you two, you listen to me. Listen to me. I've had it. Jim, Goodbye. Jim, you cool down. Goodbye. You're going to let this oh, guy Jimmy. win? Oh, Jimmy. Poor Jimmy. Oh, please, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Come back. Oh, don't go, Jimmy. I don't oh, want, please, I don't Jimmy, want don't you to go. do that. I don't, don't want you to do this. Howard, do you want this on the air or not? What do I want on the air? Do you want this re resignation on the air or not? You I really think you ought to. You're going to I mean, it. if you're going to absolutely do it, you should resign. But, I mean, and do I it on the air. Resign. But I wish you wouldn't. And I wish you would cool down and calm down and don't let this guy get to you. Yeah, because I'm just crazy. Jim, you know you better than the other two people that have run the show. I know that. I know. You know what? To, to be perfectly honest, I know what I do. And I, and so I who, so, so and now that a, guy a, a trained monkey could do this job. But right. you know Don't bring Gary into this. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. And now okay, he's going to well, accuse me of it. You know what's going to be good? Listening to the show in Albany now. And now, now you'll be waiting for Jim to react to this. Yeah. And you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, well, you guys, I'll let you know. Jim, you got to stay. You got to give it a second shot. That's all. I it's all straightened out now. I, I, I didn't get into this stuff to, to have some idiot like that call up. Well, you've got to learn. You've got to. You got to be a little you know thick-skinned. You're in radio. You know the sad thing is, Howard. Listen. You know what the sad thing about this is? Yes. I'm one of his listeners, and he's an idiot. So oh, he's calling me an idiot. He's calling his listeners an idiot because this is a general consensus. He's, he's hurt. Not, how do you know the general consensus? I'm You're one guy. guy. I'm the CIA hole, and I'm telling you, he's not that bad. He screwed up today, but he's not that bad. Why doesn't everyone? I've go never calm gotten down. a complaint phone call ever. Ever. Jim. I've never gotten a complaint. Jim, listen, you're not a bad guy. You're just a moron. <laughs> you're right. I am a moron, but that doesn't mean I'm doing what you say. I'm you're right. a moron even more so that you admit it, you bonehead. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Who, who, is, this do? who <laughs> is this guy? Just sign him up. <laughs> what are you thinking about? <laughs> huh? All right, listen. Certainly not Howard. what you're thinking. Listen, Howard. listen, listen to me. Howard, listen. This Wait. guy, you can't, Jim, you can't allow one guy to influence your entire career. But, but Howard, according to him, it's the entire city. So what's the How, You know what, Jim? It's not the entire city. City, it's just a sweet one. All right. All right. Why doesn't everyone listen? Listen, guys. You need everybody. Calm need down. Cool down. Jim, down. are you cool down? I certainly hope so. Hey, you know what, Jim? I'm the one getting the laughs, and me and CIA hole. Not you. You're the one who's getting all worked up, getting all 
all crazy about something that, you know what, shouldn't mean anything to you, but you're such a moron, it does. You're right. getting all worked up, getting all crazy you're about right. something. The fact is, you're, you're right. right. All you got to do is shut your mouth. And I got I've already done that. I've been doing that nothing. since the day I got all the job. You are, stupid all, to know that. All you are is somebody to sit there and... Yeah, he listen. knows that. He's admitted that. Why are you rubbing no, it in? He's not. He doesn't admit it because he's going to go do this. No, he's thing. not. Would you stop it? He's just trying to get more He's just trying to get more All right, all right. That's listen. why he called in the first place. To get the air. Okay, Jimmy. All right. You... You brute, you. <laughs> all right, you're a retard. All right, all right, all right, enough with that guy. Now, now oh, it's Jim, straight you're now. A, you're with the program. Jim, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. All right. You go calm know. down, Jim. I wouldn't resign just yet. It doesn't matter. I'm sure I'm not going to have a job at come 30 anyway. Why? Oh, please. Are you kidding? No. If you were my boss, would you want me here? Yes. I, I got news for you. Everybody in Albany that was going out to get in their car to go to work is still at the house listening. <laughs> <laughs> they would be out of their minds. You know, I was uh, thinking the same thing. Program director. Let me tell you something, Jim. Program directors don't know what they do. If somebody does something good, they fire. <laughs> <laughs> he's, right. So he's right. He might have. All right, Jim. You, have this is problem. good. I now have my first CIA hole. Everything is good. Thank, thanks to both of you. <laughs> we have to put Alan on hold. All right. And, Jim, thank you. Jim, this is the start of our new relationship. All right. Anything that happened in the past is not That's uh, right. even on the record. All right. Do you follow what I'm saying, Jim? You know, how the worst part about it is I'm going to lose this job and you never signed my book. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to lose your job. Hey, yeah. And since I'm the CIA hold, can I get my book signed? Uh, double zero one over and out. And, uh, yes, of course you can. You're a hold CIA hold. Hold on for hold. Gary, double zero one. Yeah, I double want Robin to sign my copy of her book. And, by the way, don't refer to him as Alan anymore. He's now double, double zero, zero one. one. And you'll be getting your badge in a couple of weeks. All, All right. right. Thank you, Double Zero One. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Howard. Over and out. <laughs> well, certainly a fun-filled morning. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what goes on with what, what is called affiliate relations. And let me tell you something. I've got a whole thing i got to go through with the program you directors. got got 19 more of these conversations. i got 19 more conversations to have. That's only one of them. <laughs> it's the love network. <laughs> I hear these other syndicated shows. Nobody dares talk during it. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be back right after this. Let's take a few phone calls, and then we got to talk to a geologist who discovered a beaver that we're going to name after Gary. Oh, I'm, I'm dead serious. Well, i got to tell you about Sally Jesse Raphael. Yeah, we got to talk about that. Let's take one phone call oh. and talk about that. Right, Howard, listen to me, damn it. Yeah. You listen to me. I'm very angry, okay? Go ahead. I'm very angry. About you letting this goddamn grease man get in there ahead of you. What? With his Saturday night sketch program. Oh, oh it was, you know it was not even is. true. He, it, the Fox denied the whole thing. He's not going anywhere. Then well, why would somebody hire him? Well, why? Oh, stop it. How it? Oh, stop. It. That's so silly. He had a publicist put in the paper. He was getting a job. I so. guess the story hasn't gotten out that that no. was a, not a true story. Yeah. God, can't get a, you can't get a rating on radio. How's he going to get a job on TV? I'm not even going to listen to that. Lorne Michaels is praying the Grease Man gets a job in late night television. <laughs> that would be the dumbest move since Chevy Chase. Hello, New Orleans, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. Yeah. Hey, um, they're doing the same thing down here as they're doing in Albany. They're playing uh, playing the uh, traffic reports and uh, weather and all that stuff. Oh, oh. Where is he calling from? New Orleans. So listen, I'll... Um, I'll take care of it. I'm going to have a meeting with it's all the programs. It's going to be taken right care of in the video conference. Yeah, all right. Do you please. want to be our New Orleans CIA hole? Sure. Well, I, let me... Let, uh, I'm looking... Uh, I just wondered if he was applying for the job. I don't know. He, I'll you, apply for the job. I listen to you every morning. You can tape the show every day? Sure. And you, when you hear an offense, you can report it? Sure can. Uh, I, I, all right, thank you. Uh, when are you going to come down here uh, for a book signing or something? Tomorrow. I'll be there tomorrow uh, at, the, at the store. No, no, he's not a CIA hole. You don't right? think he's... No. Uh, you can tell just by the voice no. quality. No, that, that ain't no CIA hole. <laughs> Buffalo, you're on the air. Yeah. Can I be right. one of your agents out here or what? That guy was a real a-hole, not, not a CIA <laughs> hole. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you listen to us in Buffalo? Yes. Do you tape the show every day? Yes, I do. I work nights just like the other guy. No kidding. 
Yep. All right, you're going to be a CIA hole. Okay. Now, how take... come this guy is and the other guy wasn't? I can tell an a-hole from a CIA hole. I'm one of your best uh, people out here. I, can I understand. I can, t I can tell just by talking to you that you're okay. one of my best people. That's good. All right, you'll get a badge. Uh, I'll, hold on, I'll put you on hold. Gar you're 002, right? Yeah, you're going to be Agent 002. Okay. And what? Uh, what's your first name? John. All right, and you can never reveal to anyone that you're a CIA okay, hole. Okay, I got you. All right, hold on. <laughs> All right, that's a, C that's a CIA hole, uh, Agent 002. In Buffalo. Yeah, hold on. Okay. That's my agent in Buffalo. <laughs> and I'll take away your badge if you don't tape every day. Oh. I will have a, a operative in every market that we're in who will tape our show, our syndicated show so that they can hear if there are any weird things going on. We're programmed. And they can alert us. Yeah, get bright ideas. And he is my second agent. I have an agent already stationed in Albany, and I have one stationed in Buffalo. 001 and 002. <laughs> oh, oh. Let me swear that we guy actually in. only need 19. Yes. Because we're here in New York. Hey, sir. Oh, hold you're on. Back, yeah, you're back on the air. No, no, it's Gary. He went to go get a pencil. All right, good. Because he bought your book and it has an autograph in it. He wants me to verify it. I haven't, uh. I haven't sworn him in. Oh, okay. But as I was saying, we only need 19 because we're already here in New yes. York. We can be our own CIA hole right here. Right. I actually got a couple for you, Howard, for some other markets. Guys that I know that do good jobs for some other markets. <laughs> Okay, Gary. Oh, wait a second. You're up. You're back on with Howard. I got to swear you in. Yeah. Yeah, you're back on the air. Okay. Repeat after me. Raise your right hand. Okay. I, I am, am a, member a member of the CIA holes. Of the CIA holes. I swear, I swear to, listen to listen and tape and tape the Howard Stern Show daily. The Howard Stern Show daily. I will make note of anything that sounds foreign. I will make note of anything that sounds foreign. To the truly original, magnificent elements of the best radio show in the history of the universe. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I will report regularly. And I will report regularly. All right, consider yourself sworn in in an active CIA hall. Okay, Howard. Right, thank Have you. a good weekend. All right, your badge will come in about three weeks. Okay, thank you. Don't let me down. I won't. Only when you find an offense, you send that to me. Okay. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. He's -bye. an official CIA hall agent all two and you We'll never hear him again. He's undercover now. He's now undercover. Do not Going reveal yourself. Into deep cover. Actually. Are you married? Yes. Don't even tell your wife you're a CIA right. hole. I won't. Like the movie True Lies when Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right, when it comes in the mail. All right, we'll just pretend it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mistake. Send it back. Deny, deny, deny. All right, I will. All right. He won't believe me anyway. Right, hold on. Okay. That's a CIA hole. He's one of my operatives. <laughs> what are your soldiers? He's been elevated to higher than a listener. <laughs> Because I have program directors in each of these markets who feel it's their responsible to screw with my show because they can't stand the fact that the most popular element on their show, on their station, they're not involved in. And they think they know better than me. Oh, it's, it's a, all I want to do is get them ratings and they fight me on it. Steve Oses. It's an outrage. Well, I got CIA holes stationed all over the country now. CIA hole. The program directors are scooches. And Mama Luke's. <laughs> right? Is it scooches or chooches? Chooch. Oh, okay. It's a chuch. <laughs>